because hundreds of marijuana supporters attend a picnic rally And 36 of them were arrested at Melbourne Park on 420, you guys. At least 36 people were arrested at an annual pro-cannabis picnic at Melbourne's Flagstaff Gardens. The rally in the city's uh, CBD uh, aims to raise awareness for the legalization of cannabis and occurs annually on April 20th or 420. Adult use uh, of which is banned in all Australian states and about 250 people attended the event and police dog units and local officers were on the ground searching attendees. A total of 36 uh, offenders were arrested and processed for drug-related offenses, and most were issued citations, and and four will receive a summons to attend court at a later date. In quotes, while we respect the right for lawful and peaceful protests, we will not tolerate any criminal activity, a police spokesperson said. It is our role to enforce the law, they said. This year's event featuring the slogan, Who Are We Hurting?, included state MPs from Legalized Cannabis Australia Party and Western Metro Region MP David Estronach and South East Metro MP Rachel Payne indicated they would be attending the rally. In a uh, post to her Instagram on Saturday, Ms. Payne called for for an end to prohibition, adjoined with a picture of what appeared to be a lit cigarette. In a quote, looking forward to catching up with the cannabis community today, he said, uh, both M- MPs uh, appeared at an earlier event on Friday outside of the state parliament run by the uh, activist collective, the Craze Co. And uh, posts by the group show the pair in front of what appeared to be a caged plants with signs reading, the war on weed, a royal failure indeed. I can agree with that. Only about 1.7% of Australians residing in the ACT have access to decriminalized adult-use cannabis, according to advocates, and adult-use cannabis is otherwise illegal in every Australian state through NSW is set to launch a probe into its probation. The number of countries have legalized marijuana for medical and adult-use purposes, including Canada and the Netherlands and Portugal, and NSW police have been contacted in regards to this but no comment from them what do you guys think about this these people getting wrapped up at the cannabis rally on 420 in australia you guys i saw some of these videos did you did you see any of these huh crickets no crickets i didn't see any videos no um yeah i saw i saw a few of them i saw a few of them and like like one of the girls is like, oh, why are you doing this to me? Da 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 da. He's like, give me your arm, give me your arm. And it's just you know, more more and more and more of the same and whatnot. Um, but thirty six people getting arrested in Australia for their celebrating four twenty. I, I I don't understand that because doesn't Australia kind of have a a pretty robust uh, program and has for many many years. Um, I think this was more in regards to the adult use and not any type of medical use. And I'm not I don't I'm, I don't believe that 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 in Australia they allow you to to consume your medical use in public. Yeah, I mean I just is that the right use of resources whether it's right or wrong is that is that Mhm. I well, mean it's, I, it's tone deaf on the part of the the police that cracked down because Australia does have a robust cannabis industry. It's multi million dollar. It's huge. And, uh, it's very popular. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm what I'm kind of visualizing is Idaho or Bavaria, you know, these places that are running contrary to the popular trend because it's, it's super tone deaf in this day and age to be arresting people that forcefully over, over a plant protest or a celebration. It's weird. I think it's just weird. I think it is too. The other thing that's super weird is that it said that there were only 250 people that attended this event and they arrested 36. It wasn't that there were 250,000 people that arrested this, uh, that attended this event and they arrested 36. They arrested a large pop percentage of a small gathering. Mm-hmm. And if you look at the pictures from the article, it shows people with these fake prisons saying, you know, nobody should be in jail yep. for the plant. So this was as much an advocacy event, at least at first blush, 
as it was a festive pro cannabis 420 event. And so I worry a little bit about sort of, you know, I know it's Australia, not the United States, but it, it really feels like it's a, it's a, it's diminishing the opportunity for free speech. If you get 250 people together. I don't together, think they allow for free speech in Australia. Well, um, it may not be baked into their constitution, um, but I'd like to think that they are a democracy and that they care about uh, the voice of citizens. I'm not saying that I'm, the majority of Australians were represented with 250 attendees, uh, but when you bring drug sniffing dogs mm -hmm. and you arrest 36 out of 250, uh, yeah, no, that's going to have a, a little bit of a dampening effect on people's desire to uh, be photographed in public talking about the harms from pills and talking about legalizing it for adult use. And when I look at this article, it literally shows people with these mock jail cells, very much like 40 tons at, at MJ Unpacked. Mm -hmm. And right. so when people go and they go to these events to talk about the progress that still needs to be made in respects to cannabis policy and you arrest 36 of them for what is likely modest infractions of the restriction on public consumption. To me, it feels a little political. Mm -hmm. Well, it's fully political. What's going on is, you know, Australia's got cannabis very similar to the way we have it in the U S where you've got some areas where it's legal and you've got some areas where it's punishable. So you've got Nebraska, Wyoming, Idaho, you know, these places where you, it's absolutely outright banned, but yet one state over, like if you're in Idaho, I have cousins that live in Coeur d'Alene. They literally drive 20 miles. They're in Spokane and there's like 4,000 pot shops, you know? Mm -hmm. So you've got this weird disparity going on between access and, and it's just an arbitrary line on a map. That's, you know, if you live on this side of the line, you can't have it. If you live on that side of you the line, obviously, you obviously, you obviously, Jamie, have never watched the movie Blow. Because I have in, never. You, you should you should watch that because uh, Boston George tried using that same defense, saying that it's just some arbitrary line of this and this and that. And the judge said, no, this is not an arbitrary line. And what you actually crossed was an international border and da 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 da. And you're sentenced to X, Y and Z. And that's how well, that goes fair down. enough. But what I'm saying in Australia is that you've got activists who are trying to move the needle in their part of the their little mm -hmm. part of Australia, and the government's not having it. But I think the government's tone deaf because if it, imagine that news story today, if there was a 250 person protest in downtown Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and 35 of them got arrested and they had dog, drug sniffing dogs. First of all, I'll tell you, highly possible in Idaho. That's how weird mm -hmm. they are about cannabis. But it would, the whole world would be like, what is wrong with you to the police? Because they are so, they do not want it in that state. The government, the people want it. The government doesn't want it. And um, they're fighting an uphill battle now. I don't even think it'd end up re being that big of a story if this happened in in Idaho. In, in all reality, I mean, that I, I, I would expect things like that to happen in Idaho based off how they prosecute people for cannabis it there. It reminds me of that article we covered a couple weeks ago where that American guy in Colombia was doing those cannabis tours yep. for yep. like $25 and mm -hmm. then like selling people a gram of weed for like 10 bucks. And he got arrested by the Colombian government. And I thought to myself, the, the, the value of that enforcement activity versus the bad press that was created Somebody needed to think about what was the PR lens through which these actions should have been sort of evaluated mm -hmm. before they were done. And so I think of Australia, I think of the way in which tourism is a massive driver down there. Australia is not a cheap place to visit. And I think about how um, arresting 36 people and the fact that now it's international news, it's being covered by us on Hyatt 9. I'm mm -hmm. sure it's going to be covered by a bunch of other people. I just don't know that it's the best look. I think if they wanted to like quickly mitigate and cauterize the negative uh, press that this would likely generate, you know, the president or wh whomever is in charge of that region comes in and sort of says, you know, mass dismissal, my bad, you know, our shift supervisor was a little aggressive and got carried away. But if they actually take these and 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 run them through the entire process post arrest, 
uh, to, to, to try to create further consequence for those 36 people arrested. This is just not a really good look. I think it's important for countries to not just take the temperature internally about what their citizens want and, and believe is the just path moving forward, but also to take the temperature internationally and to say, okay, on the world stage, is this how we want to be perceived? Mm -hmm. Fair enough. And on that, we got to go to a commercial. We're going to be right back.